Apple's WWDC event is happening in less than one month, and there's a good chance we could see Apple finally reveal their M2 chip, which is the successor to the legendary M1 that completely revolutionized the Mac, bringing it back from the depths of Intel despair. But the number one question that people have right now about the M2 chip is this, how much performance are we actually gonna get, and what other benefits will we gain in terms of features and everything else? So that's exactly what I'm gonna answer in this video because we've got some new leaks and rumors from the supply chain that confirm some very important speculations about the underlying technology we should be seeing in the M2 chip. But before I get into all of that, I first gotta go through all the leaks that are pointing to this new M2 chip being revealed at Apple's WWDC in just one month. Getting started, last month, Mark Gurman released a report discussing what to expect at WWDC, and he mentioned that Apple is gearing up to launch some new Macs in the next few months, and what better place to do so than WWDC. Specifically, he was told that there are two new Macs coming around the middle of the year, or early in the second half, with one of them being the new MacBook Air, and the other potentially being a new Mac Mini, an iMac, or a 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now these details are important because Mark Gurman is known as the most reliable Apple analyst and leaker, and within the last few months, he's been telling us over and over again that these new Macs will all be coming with the M2 chip. As early as January, Mark Gurman mentioned that a redesigned MacBook Air is coming with a new M2 chip. And then in February, Mark said that at least four Macs powered by M2 chips are likely to launch later this year. Yes, that's four of them. Now in March, 9to5Mac came out with an exclusive report about the new MacBook Air and MacBook Pro coming with an M2 chip later this year, despite sources like Ming-Chi Kuo, who said that this year's MacBook Air redesign will come with the same old M1 chip, which I kind of personally doubt. And then in April, Mark came out with another report claiming that Apple is already testing at least nine new Macs with four different M2 chip variants, including three M2 Macs, some of which he thinks could be coming at WWDC in less than a month on June 6th. And just to add further evidence, Mark mentioned that the upcoming iOS 15.5 software update for the iPhone is mainly focused on bug fixes and adding compatibility with some upcoming Macs. Now this is huge because we're about to see iOS 16 get revealed at WWDC, but it's actually not gonna be going public until later this fall when the new iPhone 14s are released. So this essentially means that Apple is planning on releasing some new Macs before the new iPhones come out, which is why we're seeing compatibility being added to iOS 15.5 greatly raising the chances that Apple launches new M2 Max at WWDC. Now on the other hand, we did have some other sources like Leaks Apple Pro mention that both the new M2 MacBook Air and M2 Mac Mini will be coming at WWDC. Now in my opinion, I honestly don't think it makes sense for the redesigned M2 MacBook Air to come before the new base MacBook Pro. So because of that, I think that if we're getting new M2 Max at WWDC, it'll be the M2 Mac Mini with a redesign and then the M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch base model without a redesign. And the number one reason why I believe this is because back in February, the leaker who got the whole notch leak right last year said that this year's new MacBook Pro is not getting a redesign at all, while Mark Gurman believes the only big change will be the removal of the touch bar, but no full redesign. And this is very important because if both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro get the M2 chip, it would make sense for the non-redesigned 13-inch Pro to come first, before the redesigned MacBook Air, which I think is gonna come later in the fall. And the one piece of big evidence for this is that back in March, Mark Gurman tweeted out that Apple is testing an M2 chip with an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU with three different versions of macOS. 
And the key detail here is that Mark previously mentioned that the M2 chip will also have a binned nine core GPU model, which is almost certainly for the base MacBook Air, because right now, the current M1 Air comes with a binned seven core GPU, while the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini start with the full eight GPU cores. So the fact that Mark Gurman's software leak pointed to the full 10 core GPU M2 model being tested and not the nine core, it points to Apple releasing the full 10 core version of the M2 first within the MacBook Pro and Mac Mini, and then holding off until the fall to release the MacBook Air with the binned nine core GPU M2. But now with all of that stuff out of the way, let's get right into the most interesting part where we talk about the performance and everything we should expect. In terms of the CPU, Mark has already confirmed that it's gonna be coming with an eight core CPU using essentially the same layout as the M1 with four efficiency cores and four performance cores. So any difference in performance is gonna come from Apple increasing the clock speeds by using a more efficient silicon node technology from TSMC, which is now likely believed to be their N4P process, which is basically five nanometer plus plus plus, or the third gen of five nanometer, compared to M1, which used first gen five nanometer. And that difference alone should translate to around an 11% performance boost, according to TSMC. Now in one of my previous videos, I ran a ton of calculations for M2 performance with two different scenarios. One being that the M2 is based on the A15 chip and the other being that it's based on the future A16 chip that's coming this year or more likely the other way around with the A16 being based on the M2. So I'm gonna include those calculations in this video. Now looking at the single core performance, if the M2 is truly based on the unreleased A16 chip, we could see as much as 2057 points in Geekbench 5, which is absolutely insane, being on par with Intel's latest desktop i9 12900KS CPU. Now moving on to the multi-core performance, we could see it go as high as 9322 points, which isn't as impressive, but is still incredible for just four performance cores. And keep in mind that it'll still be less powerful than Apple's current M1 Pro chip because it has two two extra performance cores, which is honestly by design so it doesn't cannibalize the higher end MacBook Pros. But to be completely honest, this is still more than enough performance for the average person. And the beauty of the entry level M2 chip is that it's actually gonna be the efficiency or the battery life that gains the most because TSMC mentioned that their third gen five nanometer should use 22% less power than first gen at the same performance level, which is amazing. And this is basically gonna give Apple the freedom to of course make the chip faster, but also make the Macs smaller and thinner, which would lead to smaller physical battery sizes while not sacrificing any of the battery life compared to the current M1 Max. But now with that said, we've also gotta address the graphics performance. And this is where we'll see a big jump in performance because this time we're also adding in up to another two GPU cores. As you can see, the M2 chip could see GPU performance as high as 31,762, more than 50% higher than the M1, which is very impressive, and it's gonna be a really nice sweet spot for efficiency while giving users just enough performance for playing games and whatever else. Now, other than all of those raw performance numbers, there's a chance that we could see hardware ray tracing come to the M2, but I think it's more likely to show up in the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips that are coming next year. And on top of that, we should be expecting more powerful neural engines, AMX processors, maybe more Thunderbolt controllers, an upgraded image signal processor, faster RAM, faster storage, and other changes like that. And it's crazy to think that we could be less than one month away from seeing Apple reveal the M2 chip at WWDC. So if you're as excited as I am, let me know in the comment section below and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.